In this video, I've got a recording of a call that I had just the other day with Mark from Niche Website Builders. During the call, we had a good chat about link building. In fact, it's pretty much all we talked about. <laughs> we just wanted to talk about link building because link building is something that you guys are always asking me about. Um, I guess it's because we all know that we need to do link building. We all know that links are very important because they help improve the search engine rankings of our website. But it's something that we struggle with. I struggle with it and I think, I think everyone struggles with it because it's a pretty long drawn out process that you have to go through in order to get links to your site. I mean, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but pretty much all of them, bar just kind of outsourcing the entire process, all of them take a lot of time and sometimes a bit of money and yeah, it's just hard. Now, Mark is an expert when it comes to link building. He's been building links to his own sites for, for many years. And nowadays he builds links to a lot of his client sites. He's got, got lots of clients and link building is one of the services that they offer over at Niche Website Builders. Now I wanna keep this intro short, I wanna get into the call, but basically we cover lots of things. We talk about uh, link juice and what link juice actually is. We talk about doing outreach. We talk about looking at the sites that you get links from and whether you know it's a good site to get a link from or possibly a bad site to get a link from. We talk about PBNs. We, we talk about everything to do with link building. Um, so if link building is something that you need to kind of up your game on, then this video is for you. Now, before we get into the call, let me just say one more thing. And that is if you're like me and you can't really be bothered <laughs> to do link building yourself and you'd much rather just outsource the process to someone else, just you know, give them some money and they will um, get some great links to your site, then you definitely should check out Mark's company, Niche Website Builders. I'm gonna put a link up now. That's to a special landing page set up just for WP Eaglers. They offer some fantastic link building services and yeah, basically can take care of the entire process for you. And you know, they use a lot of the techniques and things that we talk about in this video um, to create those links. I should just quickly say that if you do buy a service from these website builders, through that link, I will earn a small commission. It's an affiliate link. But anyway, I think that's enough. Intro, roll the tape. So Mark, thanks for joining me um, for a chat about link building. So this came about because uh, Mark saw one of my live streams, I think it was about a month ago or so now, where I was doing some link building live on stream. And I was using a technique which I thought was a good technique where I was searching for websites that had a write for us page or a submit article page and I was reaching out to them and, and hoping that they would accept a guest post. And actually during that live stream, one of them did, although they did want, I think 30 or $40 for the privilege, but it kind of worked. But yeah, Mark got in touch and he said, wow, that was great, you're doing some link building live. However, I wouldn't do it that way because there could be an issue with those sort of links. So that kind of sparked my interest. And Mark also mentioned that he has a, basically a whole checklist that he looks at when he's link building um, to make sure that the link that he's getting is good and, you know, or it's bad and it should be avoided. So I thought that'd make a great chat and we're gonna chat about that today. So Mark, where should we start? Should we talk about uh, that technique that I was using and why you possibly wouldn't go for that approach? Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, so I guess, uh, yeah, it's in particular that that approach is, is a little bit problematic um, because you know, when you think about it, Google says that they, you know, links should be placed naturally and kind of without incentivization. So, it, you know, people, Google don't want you to pay for links. Ultimately, that's that's what it comes down to. Well, so natural what they're links, is, don't they? Yeah, natural. Yeah, yeah. It should happen organically. It should, you know, but that, that just you know, hardly ever happens, especially when you're starting out, right? Your site's not getting no traffic. Okay, once you've got a lot of traffic, then you can start earning organic links potentially. But you know, in the start with, it's it's, you know, it's almost impossible. So the truth is, you know, if you want to start building the authority of your domain, you're going to have to start building links. But of course. You know, if Google are saying they don't want us to, to pay for links, we want to avoid pages where it's obvious that actually we might be paying for links. Yeah. So actually, we, we want to avoid pages that say have things on like guest post, like or or sponsored or advertised or write for us or, uh, or or links in author boxes. So you know, in particular, you don't want to avoid the ones ones where they've got it in the nav bar or the sidebar or the footer, because you know it's a 
you know, it, I think in this respect, it has to be a kind of a, a very basic kind of algorithm that's kind of working this out. But if you've got those words on the page, it's, you're, you're probably paying for the privilege of having a post on the site and a link. So that 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 that's kind of why it's problematic. And through uh, some 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 research that's been done, there's actually quite a high correlation between manual penalties and having those trigger words on pages for the the links that that cause the penalty that, that the Google didn't like. So oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So, so so I think it's okay for some authority sites. So for you know for big news sites that have kind of got a right for us page because that's how they kind of get third party journalism to, uh, and that kind of thing. Then that's probably okay. Uh, but for the most part, you want to avoid it. And, uh, but with all of these things that we're going to talk about, it's a cumulative effect. So having one or two. It, of the bad things isn't so bad but you know you, the more sort of things you let go as you, over time you're going to kind of eventually tip that balance yeah because i guess um, that's all that google is looking at it's looking at your link profile and you know you're going to have a maybe a couple of links from sites like that and you're going to have some blog comments and maybe a couple of directory links or whatever you know you're doing uh, and you need that mix but it's when you start just doing a lot of the same sort of link building that's going to maybe wave a red flag in Google's office about your site. And and you mentioned manual <laughs> penalty. Let's just clarify what that means. So that's when your site has caught the eye of Google and a Google operative then comes and looks at your site and actually kind of dives in and, and digs deep into exactly what you're doing and, and how you're building links. And and if they think it looks a bit sus, then they, they flag your site with this manual penalty and that's that's really bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, so I mean, I guess the, the next question is, well, how, how how do how do I find prospects? If that's how I was doing it before, using the site, you know, search operators, yeah. then you know, what's the best way to do it? And there's kind of like three kind of steps that, that we take. So one is like you know, look for the keyword that you want to rank for and and, and search for it, and look for the top 25, 30 sites within that that those search results, because Google's already telling us that these are the most authoritative sites on the internet for that keyword. Yeah. So Let's reach out to those people. Um, generally, they're quite hard to get. Um, so then we kind of, the next level we look at was like, okay, well, who are all of those people that are linking to those people that are in the top 25 to 30? Um, because those links help them get to that position and that authority. Yeah. So that's kind of the next level down. So we're trying to, so within, with the, a tool called Ahrefs, you can actually export all of the backlinks that a certain domain has got. And then you can kind of run them through a tool like, Hunter, which is a tool which lets you uh, basically insert a URL and it'll give you back an email address if it knows one, or, or it might give you five or ten email addresses, but then you kind of pick the best one for your needs. Um, and then finally, um, you know, we're kind of trying to reach out for all of those other sites that have got traffic. And we'll come to like why traffic's important as well, but all of those other sites that have got traffic for your keywords. And again, that's kind of an export kind of job uh, in Ahrefs. But that's kind of the, the three kind of step process we take for actually finding prospects. Okay, I mean, this does sound like quite a long process. Um, so you've got to you know, see what sites are ranking well for the keyword that you want. You then got to use a tool like Ahrefs. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's a professional tool. It's not a cheap tool, I, I will say. Um, but it is very useful in terms of looking at your competitors, seeing what links they've got, and indeed keeping an eye on your own links and and everything like that. But it's it's quite expensive, and I guess you can't do all this stuff with the free tool that they offer. They do offer a free tool, don't they? But I guess that's quite basic. So yeah, yeah. You, you get a, a list of all the links that are linking to these sites that are ranking well. You then run them for a tool to find the email address, and then you do some outreach. And how does that work? So the outreach process, so uh, the way that we, we do this now, so it, it, it depends really. So generally we're out doing outreach at scale because we've got um, a lot of clients, so we're trying to find a lot of links. Also we use the Shotgun Skyscraper approach to link yeah. building, which is specifically a, an approach where we're, we're trying to scale up the process. So we're reaching out to a whole lot more people rather than kind of manually. Um, so, but I mean, this works for manual, manually, manually as well. So in terms of the outreach process, the way that we do it is that we will um, do, do, do as I said. So you basically export a bunch of URLs from Ahrefs. You put them through a tool, tool called Hunter, which then gets, spits that back to you, all of the email addresses it knows for specific domains. And as I said, it might give you five or, five or 10 emails for a specific domain, but you choose the best one. So the best one might, is more likely to be something like 
content at or editor at, but something like info at is probably going to be less desirable. Yeah. If that's the only one you've got, then that's all you've got to work I guess with. So it's even better if you get a real name on it, like, you know, Adam at, is that going to be better or you think maybe? I think, yeah. So I think that we kind of, we kind of have a priority list. So I think things like editor at content at kind of like really good. Yeah. And then we kind of, then we go down the list where, when names are good after that. And then like an info or a contact at is kind of the worst scenario. Um, and um, I, I guess a lot of people are going to be thinking, well, but what on earth do I send them? I mean, how do I get their attention? How do I avoid getting straight into the trash, straight into the spam box? You know, what do I do to, to get their attention? Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's two things here. So uh, there's, you know, with our skyscraper approach, what we do is we're creating a awesome piece of content and trying to attract people's attention to that content. But they like it so much they want to link to it, hopefully for free. Yeah. Um, you know, the truth is more and more sites are becoming more savvy about the the value of links and therefore will ask you to pay for them. Um, but you, you can still get some links for free. Um, and, but, you know, so that's, that's, that means producing a really good piece of content as well. Yeah. So if you're just after a guest post opportunity, of course, we want to meet all of the criteria that um, we're going to talk about today. And, um, you know, we, we have like a 20 point kind of checklist that we kind of go through. but um, you know, the fact is that I've lost my trail of thought. <laughs> You're getting their attention and, uh, you know, encouraging them. So you, you create this fantastic bit of content, but is that, is that going to be yes. enough? And surely the, the email subject and the email um, introduction is, is, is going to be important as well. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I think, yeah, the other thing I was going to say was that, you know, if you're just reaching out without a piece of content, you, you're going to have to expect to pay because, you know, if you're just asking, well, you're, you're, you're just going to be reaching out and asking for, to do a guest post at that point. And, yeah. and when you're talking about guest posts, even though you're putting work in, people are generally going to ask you to pay. But yeah, so, so in terms of the emails, um, for the Shotgun Skyscraper, we're trying to big up the piece of content that we've written. We might we might mention the number of metrics that we've put into it or the amount of time, hours of research that we've put into like creating this and kind of really bigging up, encouraging to want to click through in the first place yeah. and read it. Um, if it's if you're just emailing them, Carl, for guest posts, I mean, it's, it's just got to be short and sweet. You yeah. know, do you accept do you accept guest posts on your site? If you do, yes, yes or no. Um, you know, how much you're charging, that kind of thing. So, uh, uh, we always do a couple of follow ups with um, all of them because you know what we find is that more than fifty percent of responses come after the first email. So, if you don't do a follow up, you're missing out on fifty percent of kind of opportunities. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So, once you get to three, you're kind of you're probably kind of, you know, the, the it's diminishing returns after that point. But yeah. we use a tool called um, MailShake, yeah. which uh, automatically will send follow-ups for you. So you set up a, an email and then automated follow-ups. And it's got some smart uh, technology there in that it will, if it gets a response, but it's an out-of-office or somebody's on holiday, it kind of works that out, detects that, and will still send the follow-up anyway. But also... If it, they do send a genuine response, it won't send the follow up, which looks awful, of course, because yes. they've already responded to you. So it kind of works that out for you as, as well. So yeah, we use that tool. Oh, that's cool. I'll put links to everything that we talk about in the description, by the way. Okay, so what are the other points and, and things on your checklist that you, you you use when you're building links? Yeah, so I've got some some things to, to, to some good positive things to look out for, rather than kind of like some negative. So. Um, Ideally, you want the domain to have some traffic. Um, you know, you know, that less than ten percent of the internet gets traffic. So, we, you know, we want to. We, we, if, if, if Google is offering a site traffic, if it's ranking it for some keywords, the chances are that it likes that site. Yeah. Um, if it, if it, if it's not giving it any traffic, it probably doesn't like that site so much. So, you know, that link is inherently going to have more value because we know that Google kind of likes that site. And um, we also know that Google, you know, they always talk about they just ignore backlinks. So for quite often, if you've got a spammy backlinks in, in your profile and Google knows it's spammy and you didn't do anything about it, you weren't doing anything untoward, then they'll just ignore it. But, yeah. uh, you know, there's a good chance that they're just going to ignore sites that haven't got much traffic as well. Um, and what, what I will say here is that, you know, so generally we, we try to aim for, for uh, sites that have got a thousand visitors or more in Ahrefs. But um if there is less than that it doesn't mean necessarily it's a bad thing if, 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 if it's that kind of balance between if you're paying for it 
and if you're getting it for free. So if you're paying for it and they want quite a lot, but they've got hardly any traffic, then it's probably not worth it. But if you're yeah. getting it for free and they've got a hundred or two hundred, then that's probably fine. And Ahrefs you know, is known for like you know, it just underestimates the traffic levels. So it's probably two to three times what it says in Ahrefs. So if it's one or two hundred, it's probably two to three times that, which means it kind of is getting traffic. Yeah. But I've often again, found want... that it's, it's well under in terms of the numbers that it, it comes out with. At the end of the day, there's, they've got no way of really knowing what traffic it's getting, have they? They're doing a calculation based on the keywords that it's ranking for and, and that kind of stuff, aren't they? And it's only organic traffic that yeah. they're, they're referring to there as well. Yeah. And of course, you know, when you're building links, we obviously like building links because it improves our search engine rankings. But of course, a good link should also maybe bring a little bit of traffic through to your site as well, as well as just you know ranking juice. Yeah, I mean that would be a really good link. I mean, I mean, I think that's the you probably think of that kind of a little bit less uh, because unless it's a really huge site that that gets a lot of traffic to that one page, that's yeah. going to then be interested in clicking through, then you know it's going to be quite minimal the amount of traffic you, you're going to get from there. But yeah. it does happen. But it's it's. Definitely much more difficult to come back. Okay, so looking for sites that have got traffic, what else is uh, is, a, is a good thing to look out for? So um, you want to check for the, the link type. So you want to make sure that they're follow links, like do follow links, not no follow links. They, is there an easy way to check that? Yeah, so you can, uh, well, the way, the best way to do it really is kind of view the source of the page, yeah. and then you can kind of just search for no follow, if there's any like, no follow links on there, then you'll, you'll find them quick enough. Yeah. And um, no, no follow or one word. One word, yeah. Actually, I think there's a Chrome extension or something that you can get that will kind of show you on the front of the site whether whether they're um, no yeah, follow. It probably or not. is, yeah. So yeah. typically, things like comments on blog posts, they're generally like no follow, and, and links from your social media profiles, they're often no follow, aren't they? Yes, there's that, and, and but there's also people that are, will will put no follow in your link even if they're selling you a link because they don't want to. You know, it starts raising flags for their site if there's a lot of follow links going out, and we can kind of cover that. Like, there's a there's a ratio that we work with um, in terms of do follow, no follow links. But um, sorry, in terms of links out versus links in. But you know, the, the more links that they're sending out that have got follow, the kind of more they're diluting their link juice, and the more yeah. they're kind of get these kind of these these yeah these these links kind of going outbound. So um, yeah, so you want it to be contextual links generally. You want it to be in within the main body of the content you don't want it to be in the footer or the sidebar on um on a banner or, or an image um or on a subdomain you don't want it to be you know to be on a subdomain you want it to be on the main domain um so yeah you know you don't really want it to be in like an author box either because again that's it should kind be of, actually within the actual real content within the paragraphs um whatever it's talking about and in terms of the contextual links so would that link be then a keyword or would you say that it should be your domain name or that you should you know just get everyone to build links on the same keyword what, what would your strategy be in terms of what those actual words should be that link to your yeah. site yeah so you you want it to be about a balance essentially so you, you know you want a mix of exact match for your keyword to partial match to uh to your branded uh naked url you, you kind of want a split there so Definitely don't optimize for um, too much for exact match. Like that's that used to work. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, but it's it's it actually it's real. It's a real red flag now for Google if you've kind of really aggressively gone for exact match. So, um, no, like twenty, you want to like limit it to at least like twenty percent of kind of exact match, and have other uh, yeah, anchors as, yeah. as the rest. You've got to be careful. So, if you wanted to uh, rank, for example, I'm looking at a lava lamp for the word lava lamp. You shouldn't build. 20 or 30 links all using the words lava lamp because that will immediately trigger Google to think, okay, you're up to something that's not natural. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, over-optimizing there. Natural, it seems to be the, the theme here. You, it's got to look organic. It's got to look like people were just linking to your site because because they wanted to and they use whatever words they want to. Okay. Yeah, sure. So check that they're not no follow. What else are we looking out for? So um, internal linking, ideally, uh, well, again, if you're paying for it, for sure, you want to make sure that the page that you're getting a link from has some internal links coming to it. Um, and you can, again, use a tool, uh, use Ahrefs to work that out by pasting in the, the URL of the page and then working out what links are coming in. But you don't want that page to be orphaned because essentially if a page is orphaned, and what we mean by orphaned is that it's got no links coming in from any other page on the site. 
So it's just got no links coming in at all. And because no links essentially means no power, no link juice has been passed from any other links. You know, if they've got lots of links for, onto their homepage or, or any page on the site, and then you know, that link flows, as, as, as you do use internal linking, that link juice kind of flows throughout the site. If it's not got any link, internal link, it's got no, none of that link juice. So you may get some benefit from the anchor or from the relevance of the site, but generally, like, you're not really getting any power. So if, if it's an orphan post, you kind of generally want to avoid it, if you, especially if you're paying for it. But, I mean, if you're not paying for it, again, like, it's going to be better than nothing, um, and you're getting it for free. Um, but, but again, it's striking a bunch. You don't want too many that are like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, you uh, want that mix of, of all different sorts of links, all different sorts of keywords. Um, okay, what else are we, are we looking out for? So the other thing is kind of links to do with links again. Um, so this is uh, links in versus links out. Because what you're trying to spot here is kind of a link farm. So, uh, you know, something that Google would be able to spot easily, again, that, that there's a link farm. So if you've got too many, if that domain has got too many outbound links in comparison to the number of inbound links, then that, again, look, you know, looks suspicious. So um, you, what you want to do is look at the number of referring domains on that site again in ahrefs and you can also look at the number of links out from that domain so the number of outbound domains that you're you're linking yeah. to from that site and you just do a quick calculation so you do number referring domains divided by link linked domains and if the ratio is above 0 0.12 um then then you know, that's fine we'll, we'll generally accept that and go with that as a link but if it's a if it's um below that then th th that's that's when you kind of want to avoid that kind of page and there's, there's, there's two reasons. One, as I mentioned, the link farm. But two, we want to make sure that there's decent link juice flowing over to your site because um, you know, every time a site links out, they're spreading the link juice that they've got from all of their referring domains, yeah. and it's just getting diluted. So the more they're, they're linking out, the more dilution there is, and, and that link becomes less and less valuable. Good. Okay. So what else do we need to look out for when we're building links? And we're talking to actually, let's just touch on this. We're talking a lot about link juice which I guess is a funny kind of word. It used to be called page rank, I think, didn't it, back in the day? But if you can visualize this juice that's flowing through the internet, um, that you know it comes in to your site from links that are built to your site, and then it goes out through those uh, outbound links. And you're right, there's a ratio there. You can imagine your site a bit like a bucket, can't you? That you're pouring this juice in the top, and then every outbound link is like a hole in the bottom of that bucket, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, you want to keep your bucket topped up by not having too many holes in the bottom and having lots of stuff coming in the top. I don't know if that's a good analogy, but we'll, yeah, we'll go with that. That's a good analogy. I like it. And your ratio, you said so that's about 0 0.12. So that's around 12%, is it, if we're going to do it in percentage in terms of the difference between your the inbound and the outbound links? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned link farms. So what, so what is a link a link farm? Essentially, it's just it's just a site that um, that is is used. Their, their, their main point of existence is to be monetized via guest posting, and that's that's kind of how they make their money. Um, like it's fine to a certain extent, and people do that. I mean, and generally, generally they're kind of more low quality kind of sites anyway. They're multi niche. They you know they'll take guest posts from anybody. They'll um, you know the the you know, it's pro people do sell guest posts and, and on legitimate sites as well, and that's fine. But once you kind of get to the point where that's all the whole point of their existence, and you get and 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 it, it, it's, over time, it just becomes more and more obvious that this is, a, 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 you know, monetized through being paid. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a real site, as it were. It's just literally there to take other people's posts and build links, and it's linking out to all sorts of different sites about all sorts of different subjects and. Um, so also, but another thing that a lot of people talk about is PBNs. Is that something that you've used or you you try? Um, you know, just uh, just to be clear, a PBN. What is a PBN? Do you, can you explain what that is? Yeah, it's a private blog network is what it stands for. So generally, again, this is you know it's similar in that they've got a specific purpose for link building. So people uh, over time, in you know, historically, if you're not kind of kind of aware that they would build i mean people are still doing it right and still having some success with it but you, it's, a, it's a risky game it's kind of like you're always looking over your shoulder because as soon as somebody somebody unlocks the door to one or two sites or google unlocks the door to one or two sites within this network of pbns 
then they unlock them all. And like you're, you're, then you're in trouble because if you've got links from only PBNs, it becomes very, very obvious very, very quickly. So PBNs are essentially just blogs that are spun up real quick. Um, um, and they're all, they're all linked together. So they're all kind of sharing their link juice and kind of um, you know, creating kind of this, this kind of fake kind of network of blogs kind of on the, on the internet. Um, and, uh, you know, then, then you can kind of go ahead and kind of start selling those links to, to people. So um, what uh, the, 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 the people that, that create these PPMs are trying to do as well is kind of hide them from Google's presence. So generally, they'll, they'll try not to get them indexed. They'll probably they'll try to, like, you know, keep keep them kind of hidden away and out of the eyes of Google. So if they're not, not indexed, how do they pass any juice that's, that's valuable in terms of in Google's eyes? So... Well, I, I guess when I say hidden, I don't mean like they're, they're completely hidden from, from you know, from in, being indexed within Google. They're kind of more hidden the fact that they're a network that are kind yeah, of all okay. connected together. So they'll put them on different IP addresses. They'll have domains with different uh, registrars. They'll have uh, different hosting, different servers, and, and and all of those kind of things. So. Um, yeah, I guess hidden, I mean hidden in that way. Not yeah, hidden, okay, that makes sense. So and then they have the power. So they might have a network of fifty sites or something, um, all linked together. And I guess they then must build some links to those to get give them a little bit of authority. But then they're able to to offer their clients. You know, they can say, look, by this afternoon, I can have fifty blogs all linking to your article or whatever. Yeah, and and they're all linking to each other as well. So yeah. they're getting, kind of all giving each other. Some but so. To summarise, PBNs should be avoided. They might still work and bring some success, but it's going to be short term, and it's uh, you know, it's on Google's radar in terms of something that people are doing and something that they want to crack yeah. down on. And some are really professional about the way they do this, and they, you know, but you know, other PBN providers don't really care, and they're not so careful, and like they'll be uncovered much more easily. So you just got to be careful with uh, you know what what you're working with in that respect, but. Um, there's still people, some people do it, I say, but I, I, I personally have never done it and would avoid it because I, I never want to be, I, I always want to do things white hat because I never want to be waiting for Google to catch up one day and looking over my shoulder. It's just not a nice no. place to be because eventually they will catch up and have historically caught up with lots of things over the years. So I think that's just another one of those things. So, I mean, the way that you might know, is like sometimes you know, people won't necessarily know that they uh, it's a PBN as well. You might not be knowing that you're paying for a PBN link. You might have just reached out got got a guest post opportunity um and you know it's not always that easy to spot but i mean i guess some of the things that are kind of that that are of make it kind of a bit more obvious is generally there's a blog role on the home page not always but yeah quite often okay um it's very ge very generic themes um there's you know there's multiple topics covered that kind of thing and uh there's, there's another tool you can use called wayback machine which is on uh, the, the url archive.org um, which allows you to look back at snapshots of, of websites uh, history yeah so you can see how it's looked over time so generally what we do when we're checking links is we'll, we'll go in there and we'll pop up uh, uh, every single year that the, that site's been in existence we'll go and check a version of that site and what it looked like and quite often PPNs uh, have come from what we call like repurposed domains so maybe they were a legitimate business or a legitimate restaurant or whatever over time and they've become a blog and then they've got kind of these, some of these characteristics I've kind of mentioned about them yeah. that you make you recognize that they were, if it looks like a site you wouldn't really want to get a link from, then, you know, it's probably it not good. And especially if it's a repurposed domain, that, that's kind of another red flag for it being a PBM. Okay. So have you got anything else that people should be aware of when they're, but they're um, looking to build links? Yeah, I think relevance is a really good one to, to, to cover. So, um, now, what, what you're trying to do when you're getting backlinks is one that you want to increase the authority of your site because the, the higher the authority of your site, the more chance you can rank for all sorts of different keywords. But also, you, you don't want just random sites to, to link to, multi-niche kind of sites. You know, you want to be, uh, you know, relevance is really important. So if you've got a site about roof boxes or maybe to, to widen it out, if you've got more a, a, a website about uh, tennis, say, then, you know, if you get a link from a tennis site, then that's increasing the relevance from your backlink profile to Google. So you've got lots of links from tennis sites, 
you're probably a tennis site. So you're much more likely to rank for tennis type keywords because you've got the right relevance there. So we think of relevance in kind of three, three, three different levels. So one is like domain level relevance. So if, if it's a site all about tennis, then that's a great link to get because you're getting great relevance from that. But there might be a site that's more generically about sport, but you've got page level relevance because the article that, that's been written on that site is about tennis. Yeah. And again, page level relevance there. And then we talk about sentence level relevance as well, where actually it's maybe it's more generic kind of news site or whatever, but they're referring to tennis in the sentence that they're talking about and then they link to your domain. Um, but they're all okay, but they're all fine. Be, again, you want to strike a balance. You want to try and get more up towards that domain and page level um, relevance. But the minimum requirement is you want it to be at least sentence level. If it's if it's got no, that sentence got no reference to tennis, but you've got a link in there, then that's probably not good. Not, not um, very useful. And we have always seen, I've seen those sort of links in the past where yeah, there's an article about gardening or something, and then it links off to tennis randomly in the middle of a sentence that doesn't quite make sense. Mm -hmm. They're the other ones that you best avoided, I guess. Okay. Um, well, I think we've covered quite a lot of ground here. Um, let's just end by. You know, a lot of people maybe don't want to um, do all this stuff yourself themselves because you know it, it is quite a bit of work, isn't it? There's a lot of stuff involved. You need to buy tools. You need to get you know decent tools like Ahrefs and things like that. What is the solution if you don't want to do it yourself? I'm talking about what you can do, <laughs> Mark, to help these people <laughs> if they don't want to do it themselves. Yep. So we offer a number of services in terms of link building. So we offer. Um, it's shotgun skyscraper, as we mentioned before, where we create like that piece of content and we try to reach out and get as many free links as we can or, or, or good links by attracting people's attention to the, the content that, that we write. And that's a um, full service, isn't it? You create the content with illustrations and everything, you publish it to people's sites, basically take care of everything. That's right. Yeah. Good sales pitch. Thank Alex, you. yes, like full, full end to end. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll research the topic because not all topics are going to be about to give us a lot of prospects for which we can reach out to. So we want to try and find topics that are already popular on the web. It's kind of taking that risk away of like, if I, if I write this huge piece of content with all this artwork, am I going to be able to get links to it? Don't be well, that people are interested find, in, yeah. Exactly. So we go and find topics that people within your niche that are already linking to a lot. Um, and, we, and the idea is that we'll write something better or give it a slightly different angle or spin on it. And, and and then reach out to a lot of those same people that have linked to similar stuff in the past uh, to to see if they want they're interested in linking to our, our article as well. Um, like you say, yeah, we'll upload it to the site. We'll then do all the outreach and everything. Um, and then we've got like a niche edit and a guest posting service, which is kind of more uh, for sites that we've we've built partnerships with. So we've we've we've, we've agreed a certain um, price that we'll pay for a link uh, for a guest post. Or for a niche edit, and a niche edit is different to a guest post in that you are getting a link inserted into an existing article on their site rather than writing a new article okay. uh, to do that. Different benefits for for each. So, um, um, you know, one of the benefits of the niche edit is, is it, niche edit is that page is aged, like it's already been there around for a while, so it's you know it's got some credibility, and maybe it's already got some links incoming to it as well. That again, talking about that link juice, it's going to kind of um, filter through to your page because it's the internal links they have on their site. Um, so, yeah, it's guest posting and, and niche edits. At the moment, at least for the next two or three weeks, if uh, you're, you're, you're in this, is that we've closed the doors on our link building service, but that's because it's just been so popular that we kind of want to make sure we're offering a great service to all of our clients that we're not taking on too, too much that we can handle. So, um, I mean, just give you an idea, right? We're, we're sending over a million uh, outreach emails every month Wow! at the moment. So, you know, we've got, we've got lots of clients, but we don't want to overextend ourselves. So we, we've done this with content in the past where we've, uh, our content service, we've closed the doors for a short period, and then we reopen them again. So two or three weeks' time, we're going to be reopening the doors again to those services. So if you go to the website on any of our link building service pages, there's a description of the service, but there's also a form to get onto the wait list. So those people on the wait list will be the first to know when we've reopened the doors for the service um, so they can kind of order before we kind of make it public again. Okay, great. Um, there's a link in the description. I'll put a link up as well in a card. Um, that is an affiliate link. Mark might give me a couple of beers if you sign up via my link. Uh, I think there's some offers on there as well that, that um, for WP Eagle viewers, so do check that out. You just gotta pop your email address in to get access to those. Okay, good. So um, 
Is there any final thought that you'd like to add while we wrap this up on link building? What what should be the one thing that people keep in mind when they're building links? We've probably touched on it already, but um, what would you say? Yeah, I think it's just again just balance, but just watching out for just watching out for those red flags and genuinely, if you do, you really want to get a link from this site when you look at it versus not. I mean, there's you know. Uh, it's very easy to just try and go for a numbers game, but that's a, that's a dangerous game. I think uh, the more yeah, it's, not, it's more <laughs> about quality that, so. over quantity. It's about looking natural, and and sometimes maybe you can have all the metrics in the world, but when you look at a site, what is your gut telling you? Is this site a good site to get a link yeah. from, or or is it not? Uh, yeah, I guess sometimes you just know, don't you? Anyway, well, thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks for spending some time with me and talking about link building. It's I know it's a topic that everyone is interested in and they know they got to do it but they just find it so difficult and and um you know just yeah. don't know where to start so hopefully we've we've given some people ideas on on the best way to approach it excellent all right, all right. see you later thanks thanks alex so that brings us to the end of this video hope you found it useful mark shared some great tips and ideas there on link building and remember if you can't be bothered to do the link building yourself, you should definitely go and check out their stuff. The stuff that Mark was just talking about, they've got some great link uh, packages and services and all that kind of stuff. Do use the link in the description, that'll help me out. I appreciate it. I'd love to know your thoughts on link building. Have you been doing some link building? Have you had any success? What's your approach to building links? Leave me a comment below. I do read all the comments that I get and I'll try to reply to as many as I possibly can. To make sure that you don't miss out on future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell and then you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, please click the like button. That really does help me out. But until next time, good luck with your sites. Bye for now.